Hello guys, welcome back. This is Andrei, and today we'll talk about a hugging face model which uh, was trained on uh, cloud with GPU on Google Colab, uh, saved, and uh, then I download this model and uh, running on local, and I would like to execute evaluation task with uh, validation data and uh, uh, check uh, the quality of, uh, of the model, uh, how it was trained uh, well or not. And yeah, basically uh, the idea is to show you how uh, to run evaluation task on the model, which was trained on one session, and later uh, you run evaluation task in uh, another session, either a different um, uh, Google Colab session on uh, on the cloud or on local environment or on some other machine. Basically, uh, how to reuse uh, safe model and run evaluation tasks successfully. I'll, show, I'll share a few uh, tips and tricks about it, and hopefully this will help uh, to uh, run and uh, evaluate uh, your trained models uh, easier on different uh, uh, environments. So let's uh, jump uh, into action without uh, uh, further introduction. First of all, uh, which model I'm using? I'm using a layout LM uh, model because I'm working on functionality that helps to extract um, data from the documents, from the scanned documents and from the images. So this this model is uh, very, um, it is kind of um, important to me and uh, I'm using it daily. So I'm using the same model for this example as well. And this excellent uh, GitHub repo from uh, Niels uh, Rogge, it's called Transformers Tutorials. And I'm uh, using, uh, this, this repo have great examples for uh, different models. Uh, provided by uh, Hugging Face, and I'm focusing uh, this moment on a layout uh, LM v2 uh, model, which is originally created by Microsoft, and uh, in, in this version here is adapted and runs on a Hugging Face environment and can be uh, fine tuned and accessed by a Hugging Face API. Okay, so. Uh, let me uh, do one thing before uh, moving next. Let's uh, locally, I, I have uh, I fine tuned the model and I downloaded the model file locally and I can run infer inference and validation uh, tasks for that model. So let's run uh, validation task and while it runs, it, it runs maybe some 20 seconds. While it runs, let's switch back to, uh, to the notebook. So this is original notebook that is taken from uh, Niels, uh, uh, Niels Rock um, uh, GitHub repo and um, this validation task also. So the way it works, uh, model is uh, fine-tuned and in the same session model is uh, uh, validated uh, with uh, validation data set uh, or evaluated, right? And this is the results that are returned by uh, evaluation of the model. Um, they are quite good. And uh, it's important thing here is to show you that when model is trained, then uh, model is uh, saved into the uh, Google Drive directory. And later I downloaded the model to my local uh, and I placed into the models directory. And this is a PyTorch uh, framework based model. So it comes with a bin file and config.json. And then we see that um, evaluation task is running. Uh, there are 50 steps. Uh, it's uh, about 40% done now. And uh, my point is when uh, evaluation, um, the, this evaluation job would complete, you will see will com see completely different results uh, of evaluating the same model on local, comparing to the uh, evaluation on uh, on on. Um, uh, call up instance where model was fine tuned and at the same time was ev evaluated. So uh, if we have overall results very very good uh, here, when we uh, evaluate the same uh, physical model on our local, we will have different results. And I'll show you the reason for that. Uh, it's related to uh, uh, to the uh, structure of the labels. Yeah, let's see. So it's 58, okay, it should be done quite soon. Okay, while it runs, yeah, we can move to the labels. And the thing is when model is uh, fine-tuned, uh, we have um, like a training data and target data. So target data is labels, uh, array of labels, and this is the 
um, uh, array of data which uh, model is trying to uh, model is trying to learn how uh, to classify uh, fields to the labels. Uh, so this is the our learning task. And if we look uh, into the original code uh, up here, we will see the place where labels are constructed. Okay, not here, but down. Okay, over here. So uh, <clears throat> we we create a list of labels. Uh, basically, iterate through the list of labels and generate numbers. So each uh, label gets a number assigned, uh, like uh, zero, one, two, three, and so on. And then uh, this array of numbers is used during fine tuning, and uh, basically model is trained to uh, identify a certain field in the document uh, if it relates to this uh, number uh, x or not, or number. Uh, some another number and so on, just uh, like a mapping. Uh, but uh, there's a trick uh, if you want to evaluate uh, the same model on another environment, like on your local, uh, you need to uh, also pass a list of labels uh, to the uh, evaluation task. So if you scroll down, uh, here we do a training and then have evaluation. Yeah, so we pass uh, labels, right? So we pass validation data set and we pass labels as well. Uh, but uh, also, yeah, let's let's see, let's do a search. Let's scroll up and yeah, where we had the mapping. Okay, this is uh, label to ID. So let's do a search. Okay, it should be in the in the core data set. Yeah. So um, when we do uh, evaluation, we pass to the uh, uh, to the model evaluation function. We, we pass uh, validation data set, and uh, we need to do some uh, transformation and processing for the validation set uh, to be uh, usable for evaluation function. And uh, part of this job of uh, transforming is done in a uh, core uh, data set uh, class here. And this is where the proper uh, data structure is prepared. And one of the uh, elements, uh, word labels, uh, uh, this element is constructed using um, uh, array of mappings uh, from uh, from label to ID. This uh, the, the array that I was uh, talking about, where we map uh, from uh, from text to the number. And uh, this array of uh, and uh, when we are working in the same notebook where model was fine tuned uh, in the same session, it's everything is good because um, array of labels, uh, array of mapping between labels and numbers stays the same. It's the same like when it was used for the training and for the evaluation. Uh, but uh, if we do evaluation on another session or uh, another uh, Google Colab uh, notebook session or on local, then uh, we still need to process the validation data set in the same way and we need to pass uh, array, uh, array of mappings between labels and IDs. And uh, the common mistake is uh, to try and to generate this array from scratch. Uh, like. Uh, Okay, it's over here, right? So, yeah, this is the array. So the common mistake is to, to try to generate uh, array from scratch because uh, the uh, number assignment is random. And if you would generate again uh, this mapping, then for the same label like before, you would get uh, most likely different number. And what happens then when you run evaluation uh, task, then model would, uh, for the certain field, it would return the label with ID but uh, but uh, you but validation uh, in the validation data set mapping will be different and of course you will get a very low score because uh, numbers would not match so it doesn't mean that model training doesn't model model was not trained uh, correctly it basically means that whatever you are checking against uh, like uh, labels from the validation set they are not mapped uh, in the same way like they were mapped during the model fine tuning 
Yeah, and for that reason, uh, you if you using a plain PyTorch uh, approach to fine tune the model, you need to save uh, mapping between labels and IDs in a separate pick file. And later, when you are trying to use the model uh, either for inference or evaluation on another session or another environment, you need to make sure that you are using the same mapping from the pickle file, like uh, this exactly the same ma mapping like it was used for the fine tuning. Uh, later we'll see, not in this session, but uh, not in this video, but in the future, if you're using Hugging Face uh, Trainer class, there you could set, uh, uh, you could assign uh, mapping between labels in, and IDs into the model metadata, and later when you are using this model, you can take this uh, mapping from there. So it's easier because you don't need to uh, store uh, this mapping separately in a separate pickle file. Okay, so let's switch. Uh, so the PyCharm and evaluation task is completed and we see that uh, exactly the same model uh, that was trained on GPU and uh, uh, when we uh, did evaluation, uh, when we executed evaluation on uh, the same session when model was fine-tuned and we got very high result, exactly the same model performs very bad on, uh, on locally and this is because we generated labels uh, with new mapping, um, with new IDs. Basically, a mapping uh, between labels and IDs was uh, regenerated uh, with new data. And we can see this uh, easily. Uh, I'm inside the class where uh, data uh, validation data is transformed to be usable for, for the model. Uh, I'm printing out uh, word labels uh, value uh, array for the first, um, uh, for the first row. And this, uh, we get, like in this example, we get uh, 22, 22, 12, 12, 12. And now if I would, uh, would try to uh, rerun the same, um, the same uh, evaluation task and the same data will be used and you'll see that on this run uh, for the same uh, row, it will generate different uh, mappings uh, because uh, every time mapping, uh, when <clears throat> When a, a label mapping is done, uh, it's kind of random and for the same label, different numbers can be assigned. And uh, this is what we can see. Uh, in the second round, we got 2, 2, 14, 14, and so on. Yeah, so uh, to avoid this problem, uh, we can uh, come to the uh, script that runs on my local and instead of uh, uh, generating new mappings, we just uh, uh, reading them from the pickle file, uh, and this pickle file was uh, created uh, on uh, at the same time when model was trained on GPU on Google Colab, and it was saved on Google Drive together with um, basically uh, with the fine-tuned model, right? Uh, and then uh, it was downloaded uh, to my local environment, and uh, I'm reusing this mapping. Okay, so. Now this is the uh, the same uh, mapping uh, is retrieved now like it was uh, done during the model fine tuning. Okay, so let's give it um, a bit of time, and we should see that uh, during th this execution, then we should get uh, uh, either the same or very close result to the to the one that we had. Uh, on um, on the session when the model was fine-tuned and evaluated at the same time. Yeah, so let's see. Trans well and yeah, and as I said, uh, this is this kind of training is done with plain PyTorch, and uh, here you need to uh, save. Uh, the mapping between labels and uh, IDs separately. And if you're using a uh, Hugging Face Trainer class there, uh, you can uh, assign the same uh, mapping to the uh, model metadata. And later, when you're using the same uh, model on another environment, you can uh, just retrieve this uh, metadata, uh, this um, mapping from the model metadata. And if you look into the this label to ID, and uh, if we check a bit more how <clears throat> where it's being used, so this is a course dataset uh, class, and course dataset class uh, is used uh, to prepare data for training, validation, and uh, test dataset, and it gets as a parameter 
uh, train uh, either train or uh, validation or test data sets, then the image directory is being uh, supplied as well to uh, to be able when uh, when final data is created for the PyTorch model for training or validation, then from that directory uh, images will be retrieved images of the documents uh, from where from and from those documents uh, will uh, basically f f extract the data. And another thing, uh, processor is being uh, provided as well, and this is the uh, processor from layout lm v2 uh, from pre-trained model. And this processor helps to uh, prepare and uh, basically do it does all the job to uh, <clears throat> to tokenize the data uh, in in a format that will be understandable uh, by for the model. Okay. Okay, it's 70%, so it's almost done. And later, uh, when you scroll down, uh, when model is trained in this case, then, uh, yeah, we're using train data loader over here. And uh, train data loader is, uh, this variable is coming is uh, is initialized from the uh, uh, from the PyTorch data loader, which in turn is initialized from the train data set. And uh, in this place, we can specify number of batches and we can shuffle data set and so on. Yeah. So let's see, ninety percent, uh, almost done. Of course, uh, it runs now on my local uh, machine, which doesn't have GPU, so that's why it's slower. If I would run the same evaluation task on a uh, co-op with GPU, it will be faster. But uh, my point is uh, to test how I could reuse model on, on different environments, not just in the same session where model was uh, tuned or just on another instance of co-op. Okay, so now results uh, uh, correct as, as, as expected. Uh, they're, they're good and they're close to the same, uh, to the results that were uh, uh, achieved on evolu model evaluation on um, on the same uh, call-up session where model was fine-tuned. Okay, so um, in this video it was, it's quite technical um, quite in quite detail and my point was <clears throat> to talk about this uh, mapping between labels and IDs and to make sure that you're not uh, facing this uh, mistake when you're trying to run model on different environment and you're by mistake regenerating uh, mapping and you're getting completely wrong results, not the same results as you, uh, as you would expect because your, your model was uh, trained correctly. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.